Guitar and Excel, spreadsheet creation, mapping the path to fretboard enlightenment, part number two. Get ready and don't fret because it's just a board with strings on it and Excel will show us how it works. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, there's two tabs down below. Example blank, example being the finished product, the end result, the answer key, if you will. The blank tab having a blank worksheet where we will build the practice problem from scratch from the blank worksheet. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be doing and why. Remembering that we have two major objectives. The first objective to practice our Excel skills in a practical problem. The second objective to practice our music theory and put together a worksheet that can further help us to practice with our music theory. So we're going to start out by building the fretboard. So this is the fretboard which has both the uh, key or the note names on it as well as the number of the note which we discussed a little bit in uh, the prior presentation when we went over the overview we'll also make a fretboard which just has the notes as numbers which helps us from an excel standpoint but also i think can really help us from a music theory standpoint we'll talk about that as we go as well in order to build the fretboard we will first think about just listing out our musical alphabet and then see how that will kind of fit onto our fretboard and that'll give us some kind of basic understanding of the fretboard. So let's go to the blank tab to build this. Now note, I'm gonna first build this part in the first column and then I'll move it over to give us room to then construct the fretboard from it. So let's go to the blank tab. Now the first thing I usually do is format the entire worksheet for my baseline formatting that I want to be using. So I'm gonna select the entire worksheet. I'm gonna right click on the worksheet and I'm going to format the cells. And then I'm gonna lay down a baseline formatting. I usually use currency. I used to make the negative numbers uh, red, but we probably don't want to in this case. So I'm just gonna put brackets around any negative numbers instead of a negative sign. Then I don't think there will be any negative numbers. I'm gonna get rid of the dollar sign because we're not talking in dollars. I'm gonna get rid of the decimals because we don't need any decimals. I'm gonna say, okay, I'm also gonna make this uh, bold by going to the home tab. Notice how, how I format when you discuss where you're going in Excel, you discuss the location by the tab, home tab, and then by the group, font group, and then by the item in the group, bold in the font group. So when you're trying to explain to someone over the phone or something or Skype or something like that, you gotta, it's easiest to say home tab, font group, and then bold. Okay, so then we're gonna go down here and build our table. So I'm gonna say our table is gonna have first the numbers. I'm just gonna say numbers, and then I'm gonna say letters. I'm gonna abbreviate this, and then I'm gonna say both. In other words, I'm going to try to list our musical alphabet by letter, uh, and then I'll number them, and then I'll add them together with a fancy Excel tool. So let's highlight these three. I'm gonna go up top, and we'll say that we want to say this is going to be uh, font group, home tab, font group, bucket drop down. I usually make my headers black and then on the letter drop down and white. I'm also going to center it. So I'm going to go to the alignment and center it. And so there we have it. And I'm going to scroll in, hold control and scroll in. You can see the zoomer down here. I'm at uh, 310 on the zoom in. I'm going to start in the middle because we usually think of our musical alphabet as letters and we go from A to G. However, we've got those half steps that we have to worry about as well. So we have, if I make them all capital, we've got the A and then we've got the, the A sharp. Now, I'm going to skip it for now and just say the B is going to be down here. Then there is no sharp between B and C. So then it's C and then there is a C sharp. So I'm going to skip it and say D and then there's a D sharp. So I'm going to skip it and say E and then there's no E sharp. So I'm going to just say this is going to be F and then F has an F sharp. So I'm going to skip it and say G and then there's a G sharp and then it goes back uh, to A again. Then the pattern repeats. So you can see our alphabet 
looks like this if you were to remove the sharps and flats. Now then, you have the sharps and flats. The problems with the sharps and flats is that you're going to to name them as either a sharp or a flat. So you can get to some fancy notations on how you're going to do that. I think the easiest thing to, for me to do here is to call it an, an AB in lowercase. That's what I that's what I do here because the A means that you can call it an A sharp. It's a small A. That's what I mean by this. This isn't the this might not be the most accurate the way that music theory people represent it, but it works well for me. It works well for my worksheet. That's what I tend to do. So if you're typically if you're going this way, A to B, you would say A, A sharp, B. And if you're going this way, you say B, B flat, A. And there's reasons for doing that when you start to kind of map out notes because typically we don't want like two A's, like an A and an A sharp uh, in the same scale or the same note or the same uh, chord oftentimes. So if there's an A and an A sharp, we will typically call it an A and a B flat, right? That's the reason uh, why, why you have that in there. And that could be a useful tool, although confusing. And when we number it, then we lose that kind of nuance to it, which we'll see shortly. But in any case, this would be between C and a D. So it's either a C sharp or a D flat. This is between a D and an E. So I'm gonna call it lowercase D E. It's either a D sharp or an E flat. And this is between an F and an E. So it's either an F sharp or a G flat. And then we've got, this is gonna be between a G and an A. So I'm gonna say G A and there we have it. Now it's useful to actually repeat this at least uh, another time, and that'll help us. That'll help us as we'll see shortly. So I'm just going to copy this entire thing, selecting it, right-click, copy, and I'm going to paste it right underneath it. So now I've got the musical alphabet happening just two times over. Now it's useful for us both in Excel for Excel as well as for musical terms, I believe, to name to number our our uh, notes because it's so much easier to count the notes and numbers so for example if i just number them from one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve that's all the notes that we have right so and so if you start to memorize a is one uh uh a sharp is two b is i mean b is three c is four uh, C sharp or D flat is five, right? And then uh, D is six, uh, D sharp is seven, and so on. E is eight, F is nine, F sharp is 10, G is 11. Then, then you can start to use these numbers when letters are inconvenient. Because the letters are convenient sometimes when we're trying to spell out certain chords and in, in, with the sharps and the flat. But if we're trying to count intervals, for example, then the numbers like if i'm trying to say well how far away if i'm in the key of a is a d from the root note well if i know the number of d is six and i know a is a one then i can use simple math right i could say well six minus one is five right right as opposed to if i know it's a d and the a is a is is just an a i have to count it up on my fingers and say like A and then there's a sharp, so A sharp and then B, but then there's not a sharp between the B and this, so there's C and then the C sharp, right? So that's kind of a lot. So the intervals are way easier if you are, can memorize the numbers and you're gonna have to memorize a ton of stuff anyways. So I feel like memorizing the numbers is, is uh, <laughs> really, really helpful. I don't know why like it's not emphasized to do so because I find it to be just amazingly helpful. Uh, but in any case, then I can combine these together. Like, let's say I want I want these in one cell. I want the A to be represented by number and letter in one cell. I can use a, a, a pretty neat formula equals, and we're going to say this equals this cell, and then I'm going to combine it with an and, an and, and then this cell. So now it combines them together. It's kind of a text type of, of thing here, but we combined it together, right, with an and. I think of an and in Excel as a knot, right? It's tying two things together, looks kind of like a knot. And so then if I put my cursor on there and double click it, it'll copy it all the way down. 
So now I've got it tied together. I need to repeat this one to 12. So I'm gonna select one to 12, copy that and paste it right here, one to 12, there we have it. So now we've repeated the musical alphabet in letters, I mean in numbers, in letters, and then combining the letters and numbers. I'm gonna insert a table. The tables can be useful sometimes. They're not always, uh, the, you gotta decide whether or not when you're using Excel, it will be beneficial to add the table. In this case, I think the table is useful. So I'm gonna go to the insert tab. I'm just gonna put my cursor somewhere in here, selecting only one cell at a time. And then I'm in the insert tab, table group, selecting the table. And this then is selecting our table. You can see the range A1 to C25. That's selecting the entire range. So they call those the dancing ants. And that's what some people call them. That was the, the funny name people gave them around there. They're doing their dance around there. And then we're gonna, I'm gonna select these now and make them a little smaller. So I'm selecting all of the rows up top, put my cursor in between any one of the three of them. So your cursor looks like that. And then I'm gonna drag it, left click and drag it on in. And so now you've got a pretty tight format. So now what I wanna do is I wanna move it. If I go to my example tab, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna start building my fretboard with that theory now. So I wanna move this, I'm gonna move this all the way to column AA. So let's go back on over so I have room for my fretboard. So I could do this a couple different ways. One is I can insert uh, rows to the left. So if I select the entire column here and I go to the right and I right click and insert, it's gonna have to insert the columns to the left uh, because that's, that's the way Excel works. It always inserts to the left. So I'm gonna say, okay, insert. So now you've got it over here. And then uh, the other way I could do it is I could try to select all of my data here and pick it up or cut it you could drag it like this. I can put my cursor here and then grab it and drag it. That's actually the same thing as just saying right click or uh, control X instead of control C, cut, and then move it over to uh, AA. So way over here, AA. You're going to Alcoholic Anonymous uh, table because you've been causing trouble. You've been causing trouble. You're gonna hurt someone if you don't get some help. All right, so it went over. So now the table's over there in AA. I don't know. I, I don't know why it's in AA, but so we're gonna say, all right. So now I'm gonna make my fretboard. So let's make my fretboard. And so the fretboard starts at zero fret. I'm gonna say that's the zero fret. And then the first one that we put our finger on is fret number one, fret number two, and three, and so on. Now Excel can of course see that pattern. So if I select those four cells and I put my cursor on the fill handle and then drag it to the right, I can bring it out to 12 frets. Remember there's 12 notes in, uh, in, in the, the, the musical alphabet, A to, to G sharp. Then I'm gonna make all of these a little thinner. So I'm gonna select from M on over to the A and let's make them a bit thinner. So there we have something that we can work with. So, so now I'm gonna make this a header type. So I'm gonna select all of these and make them black and white as I typically do with my headers. Home tab, font group, no, the bucket drop down, black, number, and then white. Okay, and then this, you might like wanna indicate that this is the zero fret with a little bit more emphasis. We could make it red. That's what we did over here. Or I think I'll put a, a box around it. You could like, make it bucket red just to show, hey, look, that's the, that's the open uh, strings. So then we can number, I'm gonna do this with numbers first, and then we will, we will add the letters. So the, the frets are E, uh, A, D, G, B, E. Now, if I look at those in terms of numbers over here, I just numbered these. So it's gonna be, all right, the frets, an, an E is an eight, an A is a one, uh, a, a D is a six, a G is an 11, and uh, uh, a B is a three. So I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna put these, that's, that's gonna be the number related to the eight, one, six, 11, three, eight. Now that's gonna look funny at first if you don't understand this whole numbering system, 
<clears throat> and we will put the letters in there shortly, but I just want to start with the numbers both for Excel purposes and because um, I, I really think it's, it's cleaner actually to look at. Now, I'm also going to make this kind of like it's a header because it, this, these are the open strings. You might ask, why do we have it at the open strings in this format, E, A, D, G, B, E? And you know that gets into other you know music theory questions. Why did they? Why did they? I mean, it works quite well in this format. You might think it's a little bit odd, uh, like what what are they doing here? But it actually works quite well with your fingering system to try to be able to reach whatever you need to reach. In essence, within four fingers, you've got four fingers. So within four frets, we would like our fretboard to be arranged so that we can kind of reach as many things as we can within like a four to five fret span and this this fretboard alignment actually works quite well on that so that, that's my general explanation for that as of now but we'll just take that that is what it is that's what the standard tuning is so <laughs> home tab font group and make this black and white okay so now once we have that uh, then then I can just continue counting this out because it just goes if that starts at eight then it's going to go to 9, 10, 11, and then 12. And then it goes to A after that, which is actually a 1. So I could go through here and just list this out, right? And then I go 1, uh, 2, 3. But we can practice using fancy formulas to, to, to do this. Now, if I one way you might do it is you might say, okay, well, wait a second. I can take these three and start to do this. But that doesn't work too too far because then it gets messed up right here because it has to go to an A right there. Or another common method that I often use is I'm going to say I'll take the prior cell and then add one to it, which will work in a series because then it's just going to take the prior cell and add one. So now it's just taking the prior cell and add one, which is a good count, but you run into the same problem. And that is that this should go down to an A. So is there any way, any cool way I can do that with a, with a formula? There is, and there is, we can use a logic formula. Now you don't have to do it this way, but we can do it this way. And it's good practice to do it this way. It's also good practice to be able to recognize when some tool such as this can be used. That's often part of the problem or part of the issue when you're working in Excel, you may know the tool, but you not, might not recognize when it could be applied. So I'm gonna put my cursor here. We're gonna say this is gonna be if, this is our logic test, basically telling Excel, if this is true, this is what we want you to do. If this condition is not true, this is what we want you to do. So we're gonna say if brackets, and the logic is gonna be if this cell is less than 12, because there's only 12 notes. So if it's above 12, we're gonna to need to do something different. But if it's below 12, then comma, what do we want you to do if it's below 12? Then we just want you to take this cell plus 1, which will get us to 10, which is what we want this time. However, what do we do if it's not less than 12? If that's 12 or above, what we want you to do then is take that cell still uh, plus 1, but then we're going to subtract 12 from it. Why are we subtracting 12 from it? because there's only 12 notes and there, and that'll get us back to where we should be, right? Which is going to be like a or one. So let's see if that, let's see if that works. I'm going to close this up and then all those cells are relative. So I should be able to copy this across, putting my cursor on the fill handle, copy it to 12 and it goes eight, nine, 10, 12, and then back to one, just like we wanted it to do. Now we might have to modify this when we bring it out to 24 frets, but for now, that's working. Let's do it again down here. Let's just practice that again. This is one. The next is going to be a two and then a three and then a four and so on. Let's just go to go to right here and then do my logic test, uh, my logic formula again to practice that. This is going to be equal to if brackets. The logic is going to be this. If that is less than 12, then comma, what do we want you to do? Take that cell plus one comma but what if it's greater than 12 then then we want to take that cell plus one still but then subtract 12 from it which should get us back to where we need to be closing it up and 
copy it across. So there we have it. So it looks like it's doing what we want. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, back to one. Now I should be able to copy this down as well. So, so I'm gonna say, I should have put the formula here. I'll say this uh, plus one and I'll copy that all the way down. And then I'll see if I can copy these all the way down. So I'm gonna select all of these, copy them down. And the formula is now being applied and it looks like everything is working the way it should. Now this, I'm going to, I'm going to highlight this as black and white because we're back to our, uh, our repeating place, right? So we we started here and now we're repeating again when we're on the 12th fret. So then let's say we want to go up to 24 frets though, because now I might want to go up higher than that because even though it repeats again, we might want to go higher. So let's say we go to uh, 13, 14, and so on. I'm going to select those two and then drag out to 24. There's 18, uh, 24. It goes out to Y. I'm going to select all of my columns again and try to make them the same length or, or width. It's changing the width just a bit so that shortens the width on all these let's i'm going to format paint this time putting my cursor here go into the format painter home tab clipboard group format painter and then i'm just going to paint that black formatting which could be a little bit easier than the method we used before and so now if i if i keep copying this i could do this a couple ways i could say well 13 is going to repeat so i could say this equals this number like the nine and then copy that across and it'll copy the relative cells across. That's one way we can do it. Or we should be able to just continue this format and copy it all the way across as well. And that formula should still work and, and you can see it repeats again. So I'm gonna select these and copy this all the way across. And then I'm going to once again format this part as black and white to show that that's when it repeats and then it's going to repeat again at 24. So as kind of a double check, we should have the same numbers here, here, and here. And of course, the same logic would be that I should have the same numbers here as here. And I should have the same numbers here as here. I should have the same, see how everything is going to basically repeat. So really what we need to memorize, of course, is in essence, 1, 12, which is not easy. <laughs> That's really, really a lot of work to do, but that would be, that would be 1, 12. And then we can repeat it, which is get, it's, is once it repeats, it's still not easy because you don't have the open strings anymore and you're playing on a different place in the fretboard. So you might think that you could just get this down and that would be it. If, but when you put your fingers actually on things and you deal with the open strings, you know, you have to do your muscle memory. But in theory, it just repeats, man. I'm going to select this whole thing and then go to the uh, home tab, font group, dropping it down and put some borders around it. All right. And then I'm going to hold control and scroll out a little bit just to see this is what we have thus far. Let's make this one a little bit thinner. And now what we'll do next time is we'll, we'll use this to now make another fretboard, but we'll add our, both the numbers and the letters. So, and again, look, notice how much cleaner this one is. If you could see it with just numbers, it's so much cleaner to look at. It looks like an, a soak, what do they call that game with uh, just the, the cards and you got to get up to nine, the numbers in the cells. Uh, uh, it's going to drive me crazy. I don't know, but in any case, it looks a lot, this looks a lot more chaotic with, with the letters, even if I took the numbers out because you've got these sharps and flats. So, and oftentimes if you're using just the letters, it can be useful sometimes to remove the sharps and flats and just look at the whole notes and note that the ones in the middle are the sharps and flats, but, uh, we're going to do it this way. So we have this and we'll construct that next, another one using the letters and the numbers next time.